So, so far we've assumed a quadratic potential and everything we've done derives from that. That leaves us with our energy equal to um, V plus one half times by H C nu tilde, where nu tilde is one over two pi C root K over mu. That gives us that very nicely um, equal distant spacing in our energy levels. So we've got a, an energy here equal to one half H C nu and this one here, 3 halves hc nu, uh, 5 halves hc nu, and so on. So we've got that consistent energy spacing right here. We went ahead and we said that there is a selection rule. The selection rule is that delta v can change by one unit. So you can go up from one level to the other, or you can go down from one level to the other, but you can't ever change by more than one. So that leads to an infrared spectrum where essentially we've got a single line at the classical vibrational frequency and so if this is percent transmittance it would look like an upside down absorption and it turns out that all of this is actually hogwash so believe it or not uh, this is not true and the reason it is not true is that the real molecules potential energy curve looks something like this so we can see it large displacement right the molecule doesn't pull back as hard essentially as we pull the atoms further and further apart the bond starts to break and so the potential energy essentially is just zero at this point and what does this do to things this means that actually the energy spacings are not equidistant and so we can go ahead and we can write an expression here in the next slide but what we find is that the energy spacings get closer and closer and closer together as we climb the ladder and uh, we can go ahead and we could write an expression for the energy here the energy is actually equal to uh, the classical sort of harmonic energy so v plus a half hc nu and then we got a correction term so we're going to go ahead and sort of expand in a power series expansion so it is equal to v plus a half all squared times by hc nu tilde and we've got a factor here that is conventionally written x sub e and if we want additional terms here we can go ahead and expand off in y's and z's and so on so this is our anharmonic energy term right here so uh, y anharmonic uh, well it turns out that a harmonic oscillator vibrates at a harmonic frequency that is just one single frequency but an anharmonic oscillator actually has additional frequencies mixed in when you also solve the schrodinger equation what you find interestingly enough is that delta v doesn't have to change just by one it can also change by two units and three units and four units and so on it turns out that these have diminishingly uh, small probabilities so you get smaller probabilities as you change by two even smaller when you change by three and even smaller when you change by four you probably really can't see anything past two or three to be honest most of the uh, probability is in these just the single change but you can see these additional terms here so let's have a look and see what this would uh, give rise to for a spectrum uh, we can go ahead and we can go ahead and draw this in green so most of the molecules are in the grand vibrational state they can of course go up by one unit there is a small probability they can go up by two units and an even smaller probability of going up by three units so if we go ahead and we draw this infrared spectrum out and we draw it maybe from left to right in terms of increasing wave number what we will find is that we will see um, a natural peak at the normal um, vibrational frequency um, that is the fundamental and we will see that this corresponds to delta v changing by one unit and we also see that there is a very small probability of seeing it change by two units and very roughly this will be twice the energy so twice the frequency so twice the wave number so we see a little blip right here and if we go out and we change by actually three so delta v goes up by positive three that has an exceptionally low probability so what we see is a, a very small pimple there that has approximately three times the vibrational frequency as the fundamental and so we we refer to this in music theory as the fundamental the first overtone and the second overtone and uh, we know that when we 
maybe play a musical instrument, the string itself or whatever it is vibrating will vibrate with a nice particular frequency. But a guitar sounds different from a cello, which sounds different from a pianoforte. And that is these overtones mix in. So in our spectrum here, we see these overtones where we see changes by two or by three units. Very low probability, but we see little pimples here on our spectrum. And if you've ever taken an infrared spectrum before, you might go ahead and look out for those overtones. And so if you have a carbonyl at about 1700 wave numbers, you'll often see what looks like an echo at a little bit shy of 3400 wave numbers. So a very small probability, but you can quite often see them.